According to the theory, matter and antimatter were created in equal amounts at the Big Bang. If that were truly the case, they should have annihilated each other totally in the first second or so of the universe's existence, leaving a universe filled of pure radiation and little else. And yet, here we are, so to our planets, stars and galaxies, all as far as we can see, made exclusively out of matter. Reality 1, Theory 0. Most of the mass of things that we can see are made up of baryons, or spin particles made of three quarks. Therefore, the matter excess that we can observe and that we need to explain is an excess of baryons. The matter excess of the universe is referred as the baryon asymmetry, and the production of the matter excess is called baryogenesis. The list of three necessary ingredients needed to create a baryon asymmetry where none previously existed are first one is the baryon number must be violated, second one the laws of nature must be biased so that matter excess results and not an antimatter excess. The third one is a loss of thermal equilibrium. We're gonna explain all of the all of them. Both baryons and antibaryons are created and annihilated in pairs, but the excess of baryons over antibaryons, known as number baryon B, remains the same, and we say that the baryon number is conserved. So, concerning the first rule, it is evident that the baryon number must have been violated at some stage. Otherwise, the baryon asymmetry would have to be built into the model from the very beginning. Now, to understand the second ingredient, we need to consider two transformations. The first one is called charge conjugation and is denoted by C. It simply interchanges particles with antiparticles. The second one is denoted CP and is a composite of C and the parity transformation P. Parity, like a mirror, reverses the direction of particle motion but preserves the spins. Hence, the combined operation CP turns a particle into an antiparticle with reverse momentum but identical spin. Since both C and CP relate particles to antiparticles, if either were a symmetry of the laws of nature, particle production would always be countered by equal antiparticle production and no baryon asymmetry could result. Now, the third ingredient, the loss of thermal equilibrium. It is necessary because baryons and antibaryons have the same mass and so, thermodynamically speaking, they would have the same abundance when they are in thermodynamic equilibrium, despite the violation of the previous rules. For example, consider the hypothetical case when a particle adds at some initial state with vanishing baryon number, decays in a particle Y that also has a baryon number B equal to zero and represents the excess baryons produced by the number B. If this process is in thermal equilibrium, then by definition, the rate for the inverse process Y plus B decays into X is equal to the rate that we had previously. However, no net baryon asymmetry can be produced since the inverse process destroys B as fast as the previous process creates it. The question that remains now is a recipe on how to assemble these ingredients. It was discovered that the electroweak theory, which is the unified description of electromagnetism and the weak interaction, contains all three ingredients. Consider the baby universe as a soup and let us assemble the ingredients at the time of the electroweak phase transition. Initially, the universe is an asymmetric subphase, but bubbles of broken phase form and expand, supplanting the symmetric phase. Baryon number violating processes are rapid in the symmetric phase, but shoot off out of equilibrium inside the bubbles. Finally, a plasma of quarks and antiquarks with C and CP violating interaction permeates the universe. Now, suppose that as the surface of expanding bubbles sweep through the plasma, antiquarks are less likely to enter the bubbles than quarks because of C and CP violation. The excess of antiquarks left outside the bubbles is simply erased by the baryon number changing processes active in the symmetric phase. However, an opposite excess of quarks is deposited inside the bubbles, where baryon number is conserved. This excess would survive to the present day as the baryon asymmetry of the universe. Thus, we have the ingredients for a recipe for producing a baryon excess. But can they reproduce the baryon asymmetry that we can observe? Unfortunately, the standard electroweak theory fails. 
the reason lies in the origin of CP violation. In the standard electroweak theory, CP violation originated from charge changing wind interactions that change the charge and flavors of quarks. In any process characterized by the weak scale, the CP violation is tiny and therefore a CP violating weak scale processes would have been ineffectual. In conclusion, we can say that a definite answer to the mystery of the baryon asymmetry awaits the next generation of high energy experiments, which hope to at last shed light on the far-reaching phenomenon of electroweak symmetry breaking.